That's somebody, Adum, 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 Kwa, Adum, Kwa. Say amen. Say amen. amen. So, my foundation text is Exodus chapter number 32 and verse number 21. Three, four, four verses. Exodus chapter 32, verse 20, 21. And Moses said to Aaron, What did these people do to you? Most, uh, Aaron, how did these people bewitch you to do what you have done? You brought so, such a great sin upon them. Now, verse number 22. So Aaron said, do not let the anger of my Lord, Moses, become hot. You know the people that they are set on evil. These people, <laughs> they don't have change of heart. For they said to me, make us gods that shall go before us. As for this Moses, as for this Moses, the man who brought us out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. 24. And I said to them, whoever has any gold, let them break it off. So they gave it to me, and I cast it into the fire, and this golden calf came out of the fire. When, when you allow people and circumstances to put pressure on you, 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 you are capable of sidelining God's grace, and you will be on the tangent of flesh and destruction. Believe me. Circumstances can put pressure. People can put pressure. Unnecessary thoughts can put pressure. And you start doing things as though the grace of God never existed. And you go in the might and the power and the direction of the flesh, the end of it is destruction. How many times have you not misbehaved in office only to discover that it was just pressure? And later on, when you started thinking about the things, your adverse. You knew that you shouldn't have said those things that you said, but pressure. How many times have you not raised your voice at your spouse, your husband, your wife, your children, and then later on you discovered that what you did was unnecessary. Satanic pressure, pressure of voices, pressure of people, pressure of some unnecessary things. How many times have you not uh, uh, treated people with disrespect only to regret that what you did was, 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 was bad. Those of you who are divorced right now, at, at hindsight, in retrospect, you would have wished that you didn't take that decision. You would have wished that you should have exercised a little restraint, a little patience. Pressure. Pressure can lead you to take some unprecedented decisions that you regret for the rest of your life. Pressure of the people can make you marry the wrong person. You marry not because you love him or you love her, but because people say you are growing too, you are growing old, you are growing old. Hey, what, what is Charlie? Can you feel that pressure, Stephen? Don't mind anybody at all. Amen. Amen. I, 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 I have a feeling that you want to sit with me. You want to sit with me. Don't, don't sit with me. I know the other relationship didn't work, so you don't need to come and tell me. God has already spoken to me. So, I'll give you my blessing. Move on, son. Move on. <laughs> Clap your hands and say, no pressure. No pressure. Hey, Abba Sakaya. And the pressure that is leading you to destruction, I break that pressure right now. Pray. Clap your hands and say, pray. Pray. Oh, pressure can make you marry your enemy. You, you, you don't love him, you don't love her, but you just went to bed with him, bed with her. And then pregnancy came, and pressure of the people. Pressure from your girlfriend, pressure from your boyfriend, pressure from your friends. You are growing, you are growing, you are growing, you are growing, you are growing. and then you only ended up marrying your enemy. I deliver you from that situation. I receive it. Can I clap your hands and shout, I receive it. I receive it. Pressure can make you take a financial decision you wreck for the rest of your life. Pressure can cause you to release money you never intended to release. Ah, 
some of you, the people who are owing you, how did they come owing you? Pressure. And you release the money. And today, till today, the money is not coming. The, man, the money is not coming. Am I, am, I, am I talking to some saints over here? Pressure. I, I, here is the one I wanted to send today. See whether if you send this one, your friends will like it. And I said in the first service, by now, the words of wisdom that you have received from me so far must be preparing you for level 200. You should have finished level 100 by now by wisdom. And the level 200, second semester, you should be getting ready. By the end of this year, next year, if you receive a lot of wisdom and you apply to practice, I guarantee you it will be equivalent to level 400 and you pass and get your first degree. Can I hear somebody say amen? amen. So, see whether this one is good. Uh, if it's not good, uh, if it's good, send it to anybody at all. If you feel it's not good, write it after that, tear the paper and burn it. Can I have it uh, on the screen? So it's there, so you can write very fast. If there is anything in your life that takes the place of God, then there is a strange altar in your life. Destroy that altar and claim your liberty and redemption. Unquote. A.G. Wisdom, Sam Crunchy, Ankara, hashtag, hashtag Sam K. If there is anything in your life that takes the place of God, then it means that there is an altar in your life. Kill that altar now and claim your liberty and your redemption. Send it. Don't only send it. Apply it. Walk in this wisdom. Be a student of wisdom. Apply wisdom to your marriage. Apply wisdom to your children. Apply wisdom to your relationships, to your friends. Apply wisdom in your decision making. Wisdom, wisdom, wisdom. This is how you can get wisdom and this is the foundation of success. If you sit under my feet and hear such wisdom, and in three years, five years, your life does not say increase, you are a disgrace to me, and you are a disgrace to my altar. Please. So more wisdom, more is coming. I will be throwing light on it as, as usual as I do. But this one is to just prepare you, because your friends will be asking you questions. God had promised the Israelites that he would deliver them from slavery and from bondage after 400 and some say 30 years, some say 50 years, 450 years, uh, because God had a plan to settle them in the land of covenant, in the land of his blessing. He wanted to raise a nation and have a relationship with them and make use them as a showcase of how when a nation allows God into their system, how that nation can prosper. And God has proven it. Those people there are prosperous people, blessed people. Uh, I don't know how many times people have killed them. Hitler killed them, they rose again. They drove them out of their land three times. They came back, built the land. This present Israel, when they came from around the world, there were only 600 people. Yeah, 600. And they arrived. And then as soon as they arrived, the enemy said, ah, this is all like they are troublesome. If we allow them to stay, they will worry us. So they started harassing the 600. The more they harassed them, the more they increased to 1,200. And then they increased to 3,000. And then they increased to 500,000. And then they increased to 1 million. And they increased to 5. Now, the people have settled. They have the most powerful air force in the whole world. And you should go there and see they are military people, small, small girls. <laughs> so funny, eh? Small, small, small girls. And if they are interviewing you at the airport, you'll be angry. So look at, look at me, fianga, fianga girl. They are smart. So that was a promise God made. And God was in the process of honoring and fulfilling his covenant promise. 
And God's promise will never, God's city and God's nation of foundation must always begin upon the foundation of the law and commandment. And so Moses, the leader, had gone to the mountain and had stayed there for 40 days, 40 nights, waiting upon God, writing the law of God on, 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 on tablets. Then the elders came to Aaron, Moses' associate. Uh, Aaron, wh where is Moses? He said, Moses is on the mountain. He's waiting for the law of God. And then they said, ah, have you seen somebody who has been able to survive 40 days, 40 nights without water, without food? The man is dead. Make us another God. They put pressure. Aaron succumbed to the pressure. Crafted a very nice golden calf. And then look at what he tells them in verse number 4 and 5. Look at what he tells them in verse number 4 and 5. And he received the gold from their hand and fashioned it with an engraving tool and made a molded calf. Then they said, this is your God, O Israel, that brought you out of the land of Egypt. What? So when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made a proclamation and said, tomorrow is a feast of the Lord. Tomorrow is a feast of the Lord. Look at the Lord, capital L-O-R-D. So there is a feast to Jehovah. That is taking place in the presence of a golden calf. Taking God's glory and giving, giving to a graven image. A molded image. Oh, I know some of you by now are insulting the Israelites. Say, what? How can you do that? But you have done worse. How many of you have not given God's tithe to your boyfriends and your girlfriends? How many of you have never given your sacrifices to to? To, to MTN and to Vodafone and buy uh, 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 air time. How many of you have never given your time of prayer to, to parties and to clubbing and to talking on the phone for a long time and be on your social uh, handles uh, three days without prayer and without reading the Bible? How many of you? So, Anything that takes the place of God in your life is a golden image. It's a calf. And Aaron built an altar. Also has an altar. And so the God in your life has an altar in your life. And if there is a strange altar in your life, that is the altar that is fighting the altar of God that speaks for you. So, so when God is blessing you by his altar, when God is releasing blessing, there is another altar inside of your heart because there is a golden image and there is a calf, golden calf that you have created and fashioned. You have prized it above God. You honor it above God. You respect it above God. You give it more time than you give to God. You give it to your money more than you give to God. And they rose up and they began. He said, tomorrow is the day of feast. And then in this feast, they removed their dresses and they started doing immoral things. And then God said to Moses on the mountain, he said, Moses, hurry up. Go down. The people that you left, <laughs> as a matter of fact, if you read the scripture, this was the way God put it. God said, your people. <laughs> he didn't say my people anymore. He said, your people. When does God reject you? God rejects you when you have another God in your heart. He doesn't see you as his God, his people anymore. He sees you as somebody. He says, Moses, your people. But when Moses was going to address God, he corrected God. He said, God, your people who you promised, and you say you take them to the land, if you kill them here as one man, they will say, because you were unable to fulfill the covenant. So God, repent. Give them another chance. And I'll be coming to that right now. We call that the mercy of God. Clap your hands and say, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Anything that is taking me away from God. Anything that is taking me away from God. Die by fire. Die by fire. 
It's a serious prayer. If you are not serious, don't pray that prayer. Say anything. Anything that puts pressure. That puts pressure to take bad decisions. To take bad decisions. Break. Break. By fire. By fire. Break. 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 By fire. By fire. You like the next prayer? The next prayer is very wonderful. Say, Lord, help me to walk in your grace. Lord, help me to walk in your grace. Hallelujah. When you are able to put pressure under control, you operate in grace and you walk in grace. Can I have somebody give me an amen in the house? Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Anything that takes the place of God also comes with an altar. So which altar is competing with this altar? Which God is competing with Yahweh? What were the people looking for? They were looking for two things. Number one, we are looking for the Moses who brought us out. We think he's dead. Number two, we are looking for the God who brought us out of Egypt. So, we are not asking too much. If you cannot give, produce Moses, then produce for us a God. That's what they were looking for. If you cannot find Moses, Aaron is there. This Moses Aaron, it will worry me. Look at the way I travel pastoring churches around the world. And then I leave my back and Reverend Kifoli is preaching an error. Or Pastor Papa, an error. Or Pastor David, error. Or uh, uh, Pastor Ajin, error. Or it's a worship service. Uh, Pastor Nanaya. Or any of my associates. And then by the time I come, Every doctrine I've preached here, they have turned the doctrine upside down. Cancel everything. Ah! I will not be standing here by now. I, I thank God for the errors that I have under me in the name of Jesus. This, I, oh, come on, go ahead then. If you are looking for Moses, you can't find Moses. Aaron! The presence of Aaron shows that Moses is alive. On Friday, I, I came for the Friday uh, uh, miracle service. Now, Reverend Kifoli thought I wasn't going to be coming because Friday, I was supposed to be ministering to Switzerland. Uh, there's a conference that I speak every year in March. But because of the pandemic, I was going to speak through Zoom. So they thought I would do the Zoom in my house or office. Then I said to them, no, I'm doing live. So I'll be ministering to uh, the church and then it will be picked for the white people as well. And so nobody knew. I just, apart from the technical people, there are a few people who knew I was going to be here. Even my PA didn't know I was going to be here. He, uh, she had told everybody that I wasn't coming to church. So, so my driver too was somewhere. Then somebody told my driver, Chale, nubwe is here. The old man has come down. He said he's going to church. Come and see my driver. 100 meters. Hey. When I got here, I was shocked that people were not expecting me that this place was full. Increase the clap offering. Increase it. Now, it only told me that they were ready to receive anybody who will pick the microphone. And they were ready to receive and to respond to every prophecy and prayer that will come from here. They came to seek God. They didn't come to seek Moses. And by the way, the Moses they were looking for, he wasn't going to come as Moses. He was going to come with the law of God. He was coming with the commandment. And you know what Moses was coming to tell them? Moses was coming to tell them, you have been expecting me always, but I will always not be with you. I am bringing you the law of God. Write the law of God in your heart. This is the law that will stay with you eternally and forever in your life. That's why he went there. That's why he spent 40 days and 40 nights. The law of God. 
And the Bible says, and it shall come to pass in those days that I will write my law upon your heart. That every one of you will know God, not by what people say, but what God says in your heart. You will know him in your heart. That is the Moses I introduced to you. If you are looking for a pastor, a man of God, look for a man of God who, who, who plants the word of God in your heart and your spirit. Not a man of God who draws the people to himself so that he becomes a thin cord. And when the power is left him, he will start using all kinds of manipulations to stay in ministry. We have a lot of them right now. They've lost it. No power. It's all manipulation. Because they want to stay in business. May the law of God be written on your heart. I receive it. Oh. I don't like the response. May the law of God be written on your heart. I receive it. Somebody clap your hands and say, I receive the word. I receive the word. Somebody say the word. The word. Say the word. The word. Shout yes. Yes. And the word became flesh. And the word manifested amongst us and we beheld his glory. Friday I was doing a demonstration and I had 100 Ghana cities and I was making an altar call and the altar call too. I said if there was anybody who didn't know what food he or she was going to eat after the service you come forward. Nobody came forward. Number two, if there was anybody who didn't have means of transport and the person who was going to walk back home they should come forward. I will give the 100 Ghana cities and I will use it as a demonstration. Do you know for the two altar calls I didn't have anybody. There was nobody in the room that that you didn't have food to eat or didn't have money for transport. Are you clapping or you are doing something like clapping? I remember some years ago, if I made this altar call, there will be stampede. And pastor, you know what God said? God said, the word of the Lord in your mouth is working in their lives. God is providing for them. El Shaddai is providing for them. El Leon is providing for them. Adonai is providing for them. Jehovah Jireh is providing for them. Jehovah Zebat is providing for them. Your altar is speaking to their lives. The word of God is becoming practical in their life. Their faith is growing. The God that they serve is meeting their needs. May the Lord meet your needs always. I receive it. Are you clapping or you are doing something? Clapping. Clap your hands and give the Lord a mighty shout. Provider, provider. He will provide. Provider. The Lord is your provider. Provider. Jireh. Provider. Jehovah Jireh. Provider. Jehovah Elion. Jehovah Elion. Elohim. Jireh. Jehovah Rapha. Jehovah Yohim. He will provide. He will take care of you. He will not put you to shame. Oh, Jesus. Can you see that? Can you go to seven people? Go to seven people. Go to seven people. Professor to seven. Professor. Professor to some people. Jehovah, 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 Sing hallelujah. of his name every knee shall bow come on oh jesus
Every demon Jesus. shall bow. Every tongue shall Jesus. confess the name Jesus. 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 Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Oh, hello, sweetheart. This week, a miracle will bump into you. Jesus. You, you'll be chasing it, chasing it, chasing it. The Lord said, don't chase it anymore. Jesus. The miracle will chase you. Amen. Somebody shout, I receive it. I receive it. You won't chase that miracle anymore. I receive it. That miracle will chase you. I receive it. I said it will chase you. I receive it. If you are the one I am talking to, you jump high and touch the ceiling. I receive it. Please be seated. I went to some place be at Tema. I was ministering and some fianga fianga person came. He said he's called Nanaya. And then he came and sang for me. Then I laid my hands and I prophesied. Then I left him. And then I came. And then some musicians here went and invited me. He said, no, no, Nanaya, this is your gift. It will die with you. Come and submit to Apostle General. And you'll be introduced to the world. This is, not, this, is the, this is the Nanaya now called M.O.G. Now if you say Nanaya, nobody knows him. Because the Nanaya was a poor Nanaya. M.O.G. is a rich man. Are you clapping on your... Oh, may the Lord change your status. I receive it. May the Lord change your situation. I receive it. May the Lord change your condition. I receive it. Clap your hands and scream. I receive it. I receive it. God is, God is a good God. God is a good God. Are you clapping or you are doing something like that? We are not asking too much. Sure, we want the God who brought us out of Egypt. And then when they made the golden calf, they said, this is the God. What? What? Oh, man. And before you start condemning them, please, don't, don't. Because you have given God's glory to foolish things more than the Israelites. You want to find God, number one, this is how you find God. Number one, you find God in the memory of the past glory. The memory of the past glory. If it is too long English for you, simply write in bracket, you find God in his past glory. In the memory, in the recollection of his past dealings with you, that's where you find him. So, so if if so soon they will forget how they crossed the Red Sea. Well, question number one: Where was this golden calf when they came face to face with the Red Sea? Where was the God, golden calf? Was it not the hand of God and the rod of Moses that parted the sea and they walked through? When the Egyptians were going to be drowned, was it not same the rod of God? Now why should a golden calf now come and take the glory of God and say this is it that brought us out of Egypt? Where was the ark of God? When in chapter 17, they were fighting the Amalekites and they were losing the battle and Moses lifted up his hand and victory came and the Amalekites were smitten into pieces and they made an altar there and said, this altar shall be called Jehovah Nissi because God has raised his banner over us. Where was the ark of God? When, when they, they were thirsty and they needed water and the water was bitter and Moses cut a tree a shadow of the cross and dropped into the water and the water turned into sweetness. And they drank. Where was the golden calf? 
when you cannot recollect and you cannot keep a memorial of the dealings of God with you, you will never find God. You will search for him, you will never find him. You will find God in his yesterday's dealing with you. That's where you find him. When you are looking for God, find out first what God has done for you before. There is nobody here that will tell me you have never experienced the faithfulness of God, the goodness of God, the mercy of God, the deliverance of God, the salvation of God, the joy of God, the happiness of God. Once in your life, a day or a week in your life, there is nobody here. Nobody. It's only an, an ungrateful person who is worshipping golden calf. Who has another God and another altar in his heart. That is looking for the God that brought you out of Egypt. The God that brought you out of Egypt is in your memory. He's in your testimony. He's in your song. He's in your worship. Ask me a question. So, Apostle Jimmy, how are you able to stay before God alone? Uh, I was praying uh, during your personal all night. How are you going to do it? Worship takes a chunk part of my prayer with God. Worship. I normally start with worship. And all my worship is expressed in the lyrics of the music the Holy Spirit puts on my heart. And I can worship and I can thank God. I can worship and I can thank God. I can worship God. I can thank God. Chunk of the time. So when it comes to the real prayer topics, what I should present before God, like financial matters, like uh, decisions that I have to take, like uh, oil dome business, like I'm coming to have a meeting, I'm traveling, we are coming to have royal ladies, uh, we are coming to have convention of saints, I'm coming to speak to the youth, uh, all night and so on and so forth. When I come to those ones, I don't spend much time. Because when I'm expressing what God has done for me, I don't exhaust. I don't finish. I remember one day when I came before God, I was singing this three song. Ye beta ye ho wasi, ye be bo ni dinda. Ye beta ye ho wasi, ye be bo ni dinda. Mama ye mo no se wa ma ye dangwa. Somebody says, why my dangwa? He has given us eternal life. Somebody says, why my ye bambo? He has protected us. Muntu juma ye ho wa, ye ho wa. Yehovah, Muma Yebo no se. Muma Yebo se. Let's let's give God praise. Let's let's make noise about God. And the song is in plural. Yeah, better Yehovah say we will. And then I ask myself, but I'm here alone. Why am I singing? Yeah, better Yehovah say. And one day the Holy Spirit told me, you are not here alone. The angels are here with you. You are worshiping God together. I said, ooh. I see. That's why I can worship for long. Because I receive angelic assistance. I am happy that I am praising God. I am recollecting. I am recollecting. I am recollecting. I am recollecting. I am recollecting the memory of the past glory. The past glory. The past glory. What he has done before. You find God. You find God in what he has done. Hey! Jesus.
You are healing your stresses. You are so worship, worship more than connecting to God. You are actually healing yourself. And today, today you want to add another one. It is in your worship that you find the God who brought you out of Egypt. Show us where is the God who brought us, and then they go and make a golden calf, a golden image. What an insult! First it was fragrance and then it turned to fire. My worship is my weapon. My weapon. This, this is how it went. Oh, I thought you should go and confess this to somebody. First it was fragrance. I thought you should confess this to him. Then it turned to fire. Oh. My worship is my weapon. This is how it went. This is how I win. Win, win, win. Come on now. This is how I win. Every altar that has taken the place of God, we break that altar and bend that altar. Yes. This is how I win. Win, win. Are you sure you are winning? This is how I win. Why don't you go to somebody and say, This is how I win? The fragrance of worship Go to somebody and say, This is how I win. This is how I win. Win, win. This is how I win. Hey. The smoke of my worship. Are you ready? First, it was fragrance. Come on. First, it was fragrance. Now it turned to fire. Turn to fire. My worship is my, my worship. Is my It was fragrance. Please be seated. Then it turns to fire. My worship is my work. This is how I win my battle. So this is this, this is, is how, how I win, win, win. Oh, this Jesus. is how I win. The smoke of my the worship. The smoke of my worship will be upon the air. This is how I win. This is how I win. You find God in his past dealings with you. You find God. You are looking for God. Just remember how you crossed the Red Sea. You are looking for God. Just remember how he provided the water in the wilderness. You are looking for God. Just find out how when you were hungry, he, manna fell from heaven. You are looking for God. Just remember. Here's the second thing. You find God in his daily mercies towards you. You find God in the demonstration and show of his mercies. His mercy. Remember that God was angry. He said to Moses, Moses, I will tear these people apart. I will disown them. But Moses, Moses, what, what, what nonsense is that? How can they do this? And then Moses said, God, don't do it. Otherwise, people will say that because you were unable to bring them to the promised land. Then God, Moses said, I hear you. When Moses
Moses got down and he saw the sin of the people, he was more angry than God. He blasted the tablets down, fire gathered, took the golden calf, melted it in the fire, destroyed it, the ashes, he put them into water, and he said the people should drink. And then he said, who is on the lost side? And then the house of Levites people came to him. And then he told the, the <laughs> Jesus Christ. Who is on the law side? So if they said they were looking for the Moses who brought them out of the land of Egypt, Moses had now shown up. When he asked who is on, was on the law side, why didn't everybody come on the law side? Only the house of Levites. Then the Moses said, this is a boy, it's not me they are looking for. In Egypt, Egypt was a place that everybody had a small god in his house. The god of stone, the god of tree, the god of um, uh, 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 frog, the god of donkey, the god of the, everybody. And the presence of these graven images made them feel that God was with them. So having lived in Egypt for so many years, they had gotten used to these images. So God was trying to introduce a new dimension of relationship and they would not catch it. They would not get it. And something happened. God said, the Moses ordered the Levites, kill the people who are not on the Lord's side. 3,000 people died. But it was not enough. God was still not satisfied. There were still some people who refused to die. So God started to kill them himself in the last verse. 32 and the last verse. 32 in the last verse. 32 and the last verse. And more, 32 and the last verse. 32 and the last verse. So the Lord plagued the people because of what they did with the calf which Aaron made. So apart from the 3,000 people who died, God himself decided to plague. Diseases came and killed all of them. And somebody will say that, ah, God is very, very, very wicked and God is very, very, uh, very unaccommodating. How can 3,000 people die and then the rest of the people who also died and then Apostle Gina is talking about the mercy of God. Now, the mercy of God comes in the fact that not everybody died. Some people's lives were spared. Number one, that's the mercy of God. Number two, God said to Moses, now with these people that are left, I will take them to the promised land. So number two, God had not forgotten his covenant with them. He's a promise holder, he's a promise keeper, he's a promise fulfiller. So he was taking them there. Today, let me leave you with three attributes of God which exhibit his mercy. Sometimes you will not understand. You say, ah, I can bloodshed people die like this and then you are talking about the mercy of God. But the mercy of God is exhibited in three attributes of God. Number one, God is a jealous God. It's an attribute. He's a jealous God, extremely jealous. God is a jealous God. And God's jealousy is not that bush jealousy that you people practice where when somebody is walking with your girlfriend, you go and slap the person. That's foolishness. It's stupidity. That's why it's not jealousy. Where Jimmy? Come to this nation. These days, it's very easy for men to take cutlasses and kill their wives. The newspapers all over. Something that we didn't used to be experiencing, experiencing before. Now suddenly, there is this anger and vexation in the, in the spirit. The devil is vexing everybody. And when people are angry, the nearest victim is receive the transfer of the anger. So if it's wife, the wife receives the beating. If it is children or child, the child receives the beating. That, that's not a jealousy I'm talking about. Here is the definition of God's jealousy. For, I'm a jealous God. I'm a jealous God. I'm a jealous God. Here's, here's the definition of God's jealousy. When you replace God with something else, looking onto that thing to give you your daily provisions and providence more than you think God gives you, that he hates God. Say, what is wrong with this, my son? 
What is wrong with these Israelites? They are looking for the God who brought them out of the land of Egypt and golden calf. God becomes jealous because God says, the money you are looking for, he can give you more than you, you are looking for. So you don't need to sleep with that man for his peanut. He's jealous. He's jealous because you can't trust him. That, that's God's definition of jealousy. He's jealous because you have gone to give yourself to a certain malam, a certain shrine, a certain altar to protect you. He said, ah, what is wrong with this, my daughter? When I, God, you dwell in my shadow and in my hidden place, who can take you from my hand? That shrine and that altar and that juju man and that person, that uncle that you have put, come to put your trust in him. Oh, I can just blow one small wind and your uncle is dead. He's falling down, he's dead and gone. When you start looking up to somebody for your livelihood, for your living, for your protection, for your whatever, God, God says, oh, God, that's a mistake, that's a mistake, that's a mistake. I can give you more. I can protect you more. I can bless you more. I can honor you more. You have no life, you have no equal. Now and forever, I go. You reign. Hey, yours is the kingdom. Yours is the glory. Hey, yours is the reign. Abba, Oh, you have no rival. God doesn't want you to put anybody in His class. God doesn't want you to compare him with anything, anybody. He's a jealous God. He can do more than you are looking for. So when you start trusting anything lesser, 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 we are looking for the God who brought us out of Egypt. And the rosa to play, and the rosa to celebrate, and the rosa to give the golden calf, the golden image sacrifices. What a powerful name. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a powerful name it is. Nothing can stand against. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a powerful name. Can't you feel the of God as you worship God. You, you, it's like you feel like God is. Now, now, I'll give you some few minutes. Check yourself one hour ago before you came into the service and right now in the service and you'll discover that you are in two different worlds. You came depressed, now you are lifted. You came in pain, now you can feel you are light. You came depressed, but now you can feel hope. It tells you that God is sitting where you are. He stays with you in your bedroom. You find God in the past dealings, in past glory. You find him in your worship. You are looking for God. This is how you find him. Jesus Christ, my King. Number one, attribute of God. He's a jealous God and he shows it in his mercy. Number two, he's a holy God. Number two, God is holy. It's an attribute of God, holy. He said, I am holy, therefore be ye holy. I am holy. I am holy. I am holy. And so now, here explains why 3,000 people had to die. Here is the reason why he sent plague to kill the rest. God abhors sin. He hates it. And this is that I have been showing you his attitude to his own son. How he wickedly God 
wickedness stood by and saw his son nailed, kicked, booted, spat upon, hit, knocked, killed, blood, screaming. And God was looking. You think God could not save him? Ah, but he had the power. But what was happening? He had decided to take the sin of the world upon himself. And God said, the soul that sinner shall die. You have sinned? Die. Die. That's God. I am a holy God. That's my attribute. And I show it in my mercy. I can't stay with sin. Anybody who lives in sin, I, I can't stay with you. <laughs> when Jesus finished, he went to the hell three days. And then when he rose up, he had a small container that contained his blood. And then he went to knock God's chamber. God said, who is there? They said, Jesus. Then God said, ask him whether he has come with blood. Because that's the only way I can receive him. No blood, he should just get off. God's son. Then Jesus said to the angel, tell him I'm carrying the blood. He said, let him in. He said, because of this blood, I can accept you. So therefore he gave him a name that is far above every name. At the mention of his name, every knee shall bow. And every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. Because of the blood. He paid the price. He paid the price. Here's the last one, the third attribute. So number one, God is a jealous God. Number two, God is a holy God. Number three, God is a God that likes to keep relationship. He doesn't, God doesn't like unbroken relationship. He likes to keep relationships steady and going. And God came to Adam and Eve and then he screamed, Adam, where are you? And then he saw Adam and Eve, they were running. He said, Adam, where are you? I've come for fellowship. He said, hey, Lord, we heard your voice, oh. But we are naked. Today we can have fellowship. Hey! Have you sinned? Have you gone into conversation with the devil? Have you eaten of the fruit? Have you rebelled against me? But God likes to keep relationship. It's Adam, if it's okay, come, 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 come. Adam, if you've hurt me, you've hurt me. But it's okay. You guys are just forcing me to bring uh, my 4,000, 6,000 of years program that I intend to, uh, 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 a program that I intend to uh, uh, put up 4,000 years later, you people are forcing me to start in the garden. Pick that animal, pick that animal. And God killed the animal. An innocent animal. But God said to that animal, you know what animal? I'm transferring Adam and Eve's sin upon you. And the soul that sinner shall die. So you will not live. Kill that innocent animal. Pour the blood. Sprinkle the blood. And cover them with the skin. Of the animal. And God said, Adam and Eve, let, let, let the fellowship continue. It's okay. Let it continue. I'm a God that keeps fellowship. I keep fellowship. In my mercy, in my mercy, in God's mercy. That's why you are sitting here today. The sins you have committed, how? Oh, God should have just stood, some angels should have been standing at the gate. As soon as you pass through the sanitizer booth, it should knock you. But the mercy of God is what has brought you into his presence. His mercy. His mercy. When you see the mercy of God daily in your life, if God doesn't reject your prayer, if God doesn't reject your sacrifices, if God receives you into the house, if you sleep and you wake up every morning, it's the mercy of God. Increase that club offering, please. Celebrate. 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 You are looking for the God that brought you out of Egypt. That's the God you are praising now. That's the God you are worshiping now. 
Just think about yesterday. Think about his mercy. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. My King. What a powerful name it is. Nothing can stand against. So, I, I'm preparing them for Easter. And today's subject is uh, don't be under pressure. Walk in grace. Don't be under pressure. And our foundation text is Exodus chapter 32. And we see Joshua, so we see Aaron under pressure uh, of the people um, uh, taking their golden rings and making a car for them saying that this is the God that brought us from Egypt. What an abuse to the attribute of God. And they began to give sacrifices. King Saul also was pressurized before. King Saul had the instructions from God. This, defeat the uh, uh, Agag and the Amalekites. Destroy their animals, everything. He goes there, he spares Agag, the king, and then the animals, he took them, and he says he was coming to do offering. And then someone comes and said, Saul, why king, why did you do why did you obey the instructions that you were given? Oh, uh, the, I was going to kill them and the people said, uh, we'll need the animals for sacrifice and so on. So I brought them for sacrifice. You know this, your God, uh, Samuel, he likes sacrifices. And then Samuel said to him, from today, the kingdom is torn away from you because you succumb to the pressure of the people. John the Baptist was under pressure. His disciples came to him and said, Sir, the guy you baptize and he introduced. See, more people are following him than you. All our members have gone there. Please, denounce him. And let the people come back. He said, how can I denounce the son of God? He is the reason why I came. I was, I, I, I was born. My mother had a miracle birth of me just to come and prepare the way for this man. His sanders, I am not even worthy to untie. That he may increase. And I would decrease. John survived. He survived the pressure. John survived the pressure. John survived the pressure. Pilate was under pressure. Pilate was under pressure. So there was Jesus and there was Barabbas. And our subject for the Easter is Barabbas or Christ. Choose. When you are under pressure, taking a decision is not that easy. And I know that you condemn the people who said, crucify Jesus, give us Barabbas, release Barabbas, release Barabbas. Hey! Wait! Your small temptations you are not able to overcome. Small temptations. Today, if there's any prayer you pray after we enter to worship, is, the, is this prayer, Lord, grant me the grace. Grace to serve you to the end. Grace to love you to the end. Grace to show you to the world. Grace to show gratitude. Grace to know you even in my pain and in my troubles. Actually, pray this prayer, I beg you. Pray, pray, why? Pray this prayer. Because your Christian faith is on the line. Pilate, the governor, he was confused. Jesus, please say something, say something. Let me release you. You are too quiet now. You are too quiet. Then Jesus said, what should I say? The, the, uh, I'm the king of the Jews, uh, the son of God. I came to bear the, teach them the truth. But say something. Are you the Christ? Then he went to the people. Uh, what did you say that he has done? We don't care what he has done. We said, release Barabbas. Pilate comes to Jesus. Jesus, I'm under pressure. I have to take a decision right now. I have to release one person, you or Barabbas. They say they want Barabbas. But if you say something, I can release you because Barabbas is a criminal. He must die. Barabbas or Christ? 
which one would you choose? When you are under pressure of the people, when you are under pressure of voices, when you are under pressure of temptations, when you are under pressure of situations and circumstances, which one do you choose? Convenience or inconvenience? Barabbas was convenient for them. Jesus was creating too many, too many problems with his teachings. He was getting too much following and too much attention. Kill him. Aaron spoke the truth. He said, Moses, you know how stubborn these people are. I didn't want to create the calf. I didn't want to create the image. But these people, they have evil. They haven't changed from their, the Egyptian spirit, the Egyptian mentality. God said, kill them. I pray that you don't die under pressure. I pray that when you are under pressure, the Holy Spirit must come upon you and the grace of God must fill you. Don't marry because people are marrying and people are putting pressure on you. No. You will marry the wrong person. That's pressure. That's pressure. Don't crave for money because your friends have made money and everybody's riding big cars. No. 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 Wait for your time. Wait in your lane. Like John the Baptist. Be in your lane. Be in your ministry. Your glory and your honor will come. Bishop, our church people don't know the difference between motivation and then covetousness. They don't know the difference. When we tell them, don't be motivated, don't, don't, don't be fooled, and, and don't be envious and jealous of somebody's success. Somebody has married. Somebody has built a house. Somebody has traveled. So you also want it. That's covetousness. It will land into trouble. This is different from motivation. He has succeeded. You are motivated by his success. He has married. You are motivated by the, his marriage. He has bought a car. You are motivated. And here's how you get motivated. You get motivated by just thanking God for him and for her. He said, Father, I thank you for blessing him. I thank you for blessing her. I am not jealous. Father, I also want that car or a better one. I want also that house or a better one. I also want that job, a better one. But Lord, I will not be under pressure. I will wait and I'll work hard and I'll be in my lane. When my time comes, give it to me. I am telling you, those are the people who prosper. Those are the people who overtake. I give you the spirit of overtaking. I receive it. And I give you the spirit of acceleration. I receive it. May you overtake those who have gone ahead. I receive it. Clap your hands and say, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I refuse to be under pressure. I refuse to be under pressure. From today. From today. Pressure will be under my feet. Pressure will be under my feet. Situations and circumstances. Situations and circumstances.